typical machine we'll talk about specifically is the lever. Uh, Archimedes famously said, give me but one firm spot on which to stand and I will move the earth. But he's going to use a fulcrum and a lever to do it. Now, there are three classes of levers, and their classification depends on the relative arrangement of the fulcrum, the load, and the effort. And so here's a first class lever. This is like a seesaw. This is also like scissors, where you're putting effort on one side, putting forth effort on one side of the fulcrum, and moving a load on the other side of the fulcrum. In this type of lever, whichever direction the effort is in, in this case down, the direction of the motion of the load is going to be opposite. And in this arrangement, the fulcrum must support the sum of both the effort force and the load force, because while the lever is put uh, putting forth an upward force on the load, the load is also putting a downward force on the lever. So if we look at what's acting on the lever, the effort force and the load are both acting down, and so the fulcrum has to support both of those. However, uh, when we're looking at the load that the lever uh, applies to the load, our effort force on the lever is down, the force acting on the load is up. Now, in a second class lever, we have the fulcrum at one end and the load in between the fulcrum and the effort. As you can see, when you apply an upward force at the effort end, the load also moves upward. Necessarily, in this case, the amount that the effort is moved, the amount of D in that you put into this will always be greater than the D out you get. Now in a third class lever, we have fulcrum again, and in this case the effort is located in between the fulcrum and the load. And so, we'll again note that the direction of the input uh, distance, uh, displacement, is the same as the direction of the output displacement. We should also note that whatever displacement we put in, the load displacement is going to be greater than that. And so, as a result, because the di, the d in, is small, the f in is going to be large. Because the d out is great, the f out is going to be small. We'll talk a little bit more about why that is. Uh, and so in this case, this is always going to have a smaller than one mechanical advantage. The effect is that this, while it cuts the amount of force output to the load, what it does is it amplifies the displacement. And so, again, if we look at these three types of levers, we have first class lever with a fulcrum here, the input and output. The mechanical advantage of this type of lever is always going to be variable. Why is that? Because by moving this fulcrum back and forth, we can change the ratio of how far the output moves to how far the input moves. If the fulcrum is closer to the output, then 
we'll have to move this for a given amount of motion. We'll get a D out of this and a D in much greater. However, if we move the fulcrum to a different place, uh, this mechanical advantage will change. Again, this is representative of scissors, of a seesaw, or perhaps a pry bar. There are numerous examples of this type of lever. The second class lever has a fulcrum at the end. Out and in. The mechanical advantage of this is always going to be greater than one. Why? Because in terms of the distance in and the distance out, distance in is always going to be greater. So this ratio is always going to be greater than 1. In terms of examples, this is uh, a wheelbarrow or perhaps many of you have had nutcrackers, not the doll type necessarily, but uh, nutcrackers that are like this with a hinge at the top. Handles that you squeeze at the end with the nut placed in the middle. And because the mechanical advantage of this is greater than one, this will tend to amplify the force that you put in. The force that you get out is going to be greater than the force you put in, and yet the distance out is going to be less than the distance in. In terms of third class levers, we again have fulcrum at the end, The load is at the end, and the input is somewhere in the middle. Because, again, of the way things are arranged, say we move the lever from there to there, we have a D in that is very small, a D out that is large, and so D in over D out is going to be less than 1, and so mechanical advantage is going to be less than 1. This will, for whatever force you put in, put out less force, but it'll put it over a larger distance. This is useful in situations where you can put forth a lot of force, and what you want to do is move something a greater distance, something relatively light compared to the amount of force you can generate. Because, again, the D in and D out, because the different parts of the levers cover those distances in the same amount of time, the output end is also moving faster than the input end. So we're, uh, however fast we can move the input, the output is moving faster. And so this is useful then uh, in a baseball bat where the bat head speed is what affects the, uh, the movement of the ball afterwards. This is also used in like a fire, a fire truck ladder. Because if this is a fire truck,
and we have some sort of hydraulic motor here. Hydraulics can put forth a lot of effort, and yet they're limited, their travel is limited by the length of the piston inside, and so we can put a large force here. We're not able to put a whole lot of distance in, and by using a third-class lever, we uh, magnify the distance coming out. Now, with levers, because I am A is equal to D in over D out, and because the distances that are traveled are related to the length of the lever arms, now let's draw that out. Here's a first class lever and this smaller D out, let's call that D out, and this larger D in, those are related, those are proportional in fact, to the relative lengths of the lever arms. And because of that fact, IMA for a lever is also equal to L in over L out, with L being the length of the respective, respective lever arms. Now, when we're talking about AMA, AMA is always calculated by measuring the forces. We could try and calculate AMA based on uh, the expected losses, but it's a lot simpler to call uh, to determine AMA like this by actually measuring the force you put in and the force you get out.